<laughs> and then somebody opened the curtain a little bit and the cur- the sun was out. So I'm like, oh, wow, it's, it's the next day. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's bright. And the light is going across the room directly into her face. She's lying in the bed. And I'm like... And I look at her face and I'm like, wait, that's not fucking Sandra Bullock. <laughs> Boom. What's up, everyone? Welcome. I oh, almost said Demolition Radio. I seriously just saw you and I was like, we're back in Demolition Radio. That's 20 years ago. Yeah. What are, great. What are we? Oh, Hawk versus Wolf. Yeah. What's up? It's a better name. Yeah. I like this show better. Demolition Radio allowed me to have hosts breeze in and out, though. Right. You know, because this that. one is just, it's you and me. It's pressure. And... Mitchy Brusco. That's going to help. Hey, guys. How's it going? What's up? Thanks for having me. I've Thanks been... for being here, buddy. How are you? I'm doing good. I've been watching this since the since the beginning of the podcast. So oh, I appreciate it. I, I really... did his show. What's that? He's got a podcast. Yeah. It's pretty good. I know. What's it called? Uh, Brusco Talk Shop. That's right. I almost forgot my the name of my show now. It's too many shows. <laughs> we're, we're in a sea of shows. We can't remember our own. I can't even remember um, Sandra Jesus' name. So, you know. That was, wow, that was I would hilarious. Have, I would have left that out. That's crazy you're going to do that. That was hilarious, No one would dude. know. It's, you know what it was? It was that… So when we did the… We're, we're, we're coming straight off of Vert Alert here. Yeah. Uh, when we did the Legends demo, I was I was introducing… I was already didn't want to do that because I knew I was going to screw something up. Yeah. I don't know why Even you though. did it. I was told I was doing it and then you just started doing it. I was like, okay. Yeah. I, I thought someone was like, you, you just introduced everyone. I was like, yeah, I can do that. And then I'm so used to… Uh, Huck Sham, yeah. introducing everyone on the deck. Yeah. And Lincoln Ueda just comes out of my mouth. Yeah. He's, and I'm blind and he's Brazilian and I'm like, it's Lincoln Ueda. I already introduced Lincoln. I was going to say the only problem with that is you already introduced yeah. Lincoln Ueda. But it's just, it just, it just like, it's like when I look across the deck, I am transported to 2003 Huck Sham. The best bit was you recovered by saying, I don't know, you guys are both from Brazil. And I was like, wow. Like, is that better? <laughs> like, did that you're both, help your argument? Brazil, both from Brazil, both high flyers. <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. You said high flyers. Good for you. That was it. Yeah. Maybe high flyers saved you from just being like, <laughs> Brazilians, so, I can't tell you I, guys apart. <laughs> I think I made it up to Sandro, but I want to apologize publicly again. I'm sorry, Sandro. Um, it was pretty funny watching you know. Sandro go, wait, I'm Lincoln Ueda? <laughs> I thought uh, uh, you're not, me. We're, yeah. and I was it's like, like no, that no, no. Spider-Man meme. I was like, you're still Sanjar, and he's like, okay, cool. And then you, <laughs> and then you said, yes, that is indeed. You almost, you almost covered your ass by saying demolition radio because then all the shows are just 20 years ago. Everything. And it's not yeah, personal. Yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm. Well, that could be an Alzheimer's thing. That's a problem. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I'm just like, is that, is that young Mitchie? Is, <laughs> how old is I? What, yeah, five years old. Yeah. What did we do? Wait, you and I did. Okay, first time. I, th- I think it's the first time we officially met, <clears throat> correct if I'm wrong, in New York. Yes. And doing a show called The Naked Brothers Band. That was it. That was okay. the one. Your memory is they, way better in this case. They than had me on the show switch places with like the lead. Not as a double, oh, but that was yeah. like the, the idea the of the show. Line. Yeah. And he was in a band and then he wanted to be a pro skater. So they brought you into like judge one but your house was basically on fire that whole week you were pretty distracted looking at talking to people at home because one of the oh, part, one that of the was fires during, that, during the crazy fires yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we mm-hmm. we actually we had all of our stuff in our cars yeah oh shit yeah, yeah it was wild it while was, you were doing that the was show. when all the fires were jumping over the streets yeah, here yeah, in yeah, north yeah. county oh that's and so you crazy you remember all that yeah yeah but the the first time i, I saw you in person because i grew up in seattle and you did oh, a demo yeah. at Rain City. I don't know if you remember that skate park. They had a huge vert ramp. It was a huge warehouse. And I went and watched that show. You did a street demo. Was it? It must have been a birdhouse tour. Must have been. I don't know. I was I was five. Crazy. Wow. That wasn't your ramp. Wait. So what year was <laughs> it? If you were five, what year was that? Uh, I was born in '97, so I was like 02, 03, right around oh, there. Oh, it was probably a Quicksilver thing then. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. Um. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, so, yeah, I remember that show because it, it, I'd never been to that. Par- it was like a random indoor park in Brooklyn. 
that the sketchy indoor bowl with yeah, transitions bowl. Right. like uh, that day one with, was with like so a vert long. extension. Yeah, that was like a da-da extension, mm. and that was the only vert of the ball. And then um, I, I don't know if I knew Mitchie at the time or I'd heard of him, but they were just like, "This is the new kid. Mm. This is it. like he's the guy." And I was like, "Awesome, let's go." <laughs> Word. And then he was killing it. <laughs> Not long after we. Uh, not long after Andy brought me here. I mean, it was maybe three years later, four years later. Andy had brought me here. Oh, okay. And then we went to Sydney. Oh yeah, yeah. For the um, for the demos for it was at that monster skate that? park. Yeah, not the energy drink, but right. Yeah, the monster the- skate park. We. Yeah, we did it like… I don't even know what that was for. No idea. That harbor bridge climb though. <laughs> yes. I remember I that. Have, I still have photos of, of you and your mom. Yep. With the harbor, that's- What's it like being a five-year-old and everybody says this is the new guy? And you hear that because you… Clearly- well, it was a five at the time. You were probably like… Well, seven? But, but when on that People show, were that I must have age, been right? eight or nine. Well, the thing, the thing was… <laughs> this was kind of all before… Instagram didn't really come out till I was about like 14. So okay. social didn't really play the same role that it that it played na- that it plays now. Um, but you know, I was on when I was when I was five. I was on the Today Show yeah. for Escape. Like before I ever did a kickflip or anything, I remember specifically because I like planned. Who booked you on the show? My mom was insane. She just like so somehow, she was like your PR. Yeah, she. I don't know how she did so it. So you you actually flew to New York for that TV show and for the Today Show for separately. so you were living in Seattle. Yeah, I went. Oh, okay. I went to New York like six or seven That's times sick, by the time I, I was assumed, nine. I assumed you were from New York at the time when I met you. For that show, they were so nice about it. I was playing. I was playing like uh, elementary school football on the football team, and I only agreed to do the whole episode if they could get me back for for the football game. <laughs> oh my! God. And so one time when 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 it ran long, they actually flew me all the way back to Seattle. I woke up the next day. Played on the football, played in the game, scored the only touchdown in the game. We won. Got back on a plane to New York to go finish it. And I'm in like sixth grade. Pimping. Yeah, that was cool. That <laughs> oh was my cool. God, that's pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, that's a good question though. Like when, so the Today Show, Ripley's Believe It or Not, happened when I was really young for being the youngest to drop in on a vert ramp. Oh, Andy, wow. Andy actually, the first time I ever dropped in, I was six, and Andy did doubles. Andy dropped in oh, with like a, me. Yeah, to. And went over, it. and oh I don't. My God. And I think I don't know if he knew that was my first time ever dropping in. I would say no if he went over. Yeah. You. yeah. So that was like that's usually not the go-to yeah. or or no. the next stage is okay. Is this your first time dropping in? All right. <laughs> as soon as you make it, yeah, just know that I'm in the air me. over the top of you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I remember like him behind me on the ladder, not knowing the speed adults climb ladders. So I was like, and he's like, dude, sl- like slow down. You don't need to sprint <laughs> up. Wow. This. Freaking ladder. So uh, Andy helped you a lot, huh? Andy Andy helped me a lot. And just to skate with a pro like that yeah. the first time. I mean, that is actually probably what led to him bringing me here when I was 12, 13. Mm-hmm. Um, then when I was… Then when I would turn nine at my local park, I started, do, started to get over coping. Um, and from what I knew that there wasn't anyone doing at that age. So, I mean, yes, everyone was telling me Oh, you're you're the next big guy or or whatever, but also I kind of felt like I was quick enough, you know, because then I had because then when I turned 12, I did a five. And then I got and then I got a seven down the same year. And this is, you know, this is 13 years ago. So yeah. there weren't there weren't 12, 13 well, year olds. Uh, but also in that pocket or in that window of time. No one was picking up Vert. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're one of the few. I mean, it's like you and Elliot, and that that's your generation. Tom Shar. Tom Shar, but it, but it was <clears throat> very few people. Mm-hmm. So you guys rose to the top. You guys all deserved it, obviously. But now, it, you know, before then, there was an influx of Vert skaters, mm-hmm. and now it seems, luckily, that there is a new influx of Vert. Luckily, skaters. not Man. to mention Tony Hawk's Vert Alert, only open qualifier of the <laughs> yeah. year. You which know, is, and, which and is they fun. Show yeah. up for it, but with that, I think the guys really protect. Like, I think they really protected yeah. me. You know, PLG hmm. and Andy Mack and and you and Bucky and Bob. It's like they found one of these kids that could do it, and they just threw 
they threw all their resources at me. I mean, yeah. Bob invited me over multiple times without dropping in. You took me to Australia when I was just a baby. You know, Andy's taking me here. You know, PLG is working with me on tricks. And so, I mean, it's just, a, it's an unheard of opportunity, I think. That- yeah, but it, but but the proof is that you you rose to the occasion. There's plenty of people that have resources and have support, but they just can't make it happen. Yeah. Because they don't have that, whatever it is, that drive, that motivation. But yeah, he's got it all right. You always came through and then... <clears throat> I, I want to figure out, and I'm fast forwarding greatly here, and we'll cover everything in between. But Go I want to figure out how did you, how did you realize that you were the spinner, dude? Hmm, that's a good question. Especially coming from the spinner, dude. Especially coming from well, I was. I yeah, was not, but, it, but his not much. his spinning got, took it to a new level. I mean, not just the spinning. I'm talking about variations. Like uh-huh. you're the only dude that I think I. They did, did three sixty round McTwist, right? Besides me, you did it. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, yeah, I, yeah. And and to me, I did that twice in my life. Okay, I seen you just throw it down here uh-huh. on any given day. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what I'm saying. You took it to a new level, and I mean, we'll, we can go through all the stages. Kick with very old McTwist. Yep. Kick with very old. I mean, it's wild. Dude, the 900 the other day at the oh, it just throws a 900 casually in the middle of the, the run. Was the manliest thing I've ever seen anybody do on a skateboard. Thank just you. To me, Mega Ramp Nine is easier, even though I haven't done either one. But it's just more time, and once you know Mega Ramp, there's more mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. And doing it in a vert contest, and I could just tell by the air he did before. Oh, same. I was like, oh fuck, we're gonna. He's going for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's just like a whole different position, yeah. and your speed has to be really high, mm-hmm. and it was just executed with such. Precision, but there was like a lot of. I was like, man, you just got fucking fired up. Like that was such a highest energy, best trick of the weekend by far, and it was just in your ride. I was like, Mm -hmm. God, it was such a. I mean, that that's one of the examples I try to tell people about when they talk about like, why are you dissing on park skating? I don't diss on park skating. I'm just trying to show you what is going on over here and how much more advanced the tricks are. They are. Park skating is a totally different discipline, and it's a, it's a way of skating. It's 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 a lot of carving and it's a lot of transferring and using the the terrain, but nobody's doing nine hundreds. You do a nine foot fucking backside nine hundred. <laughs> I'm sorry, Park, but I've never seen any of your tricks add up to that. When's ever? the last time we saw seven in the park? I'm just okay. Just, uh, yeah, my, I love it. It's my curmudgeon. It's, it's my, it's running, it's my curmudgeon. It, I'll, I'll get. I'll get past it. It's okay. <laughs> if you do shit, it's just more that people are like, dude. Like when you know, we we posted all this video stuff. You're like, dude, uh, verse skating does have even progress. Like, like wait, what? Wait, what? Do you, are you? Tell me you don't skate. Without telling me you don't skate. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, hey, what are you talking about? I mean, this guy Nolly kickflip, Nolly front foot kickflip, no grab. Yeah. I was going to save that one. I have one of those for this video part I'm working on. And I was going to save it. And well, thank then, you for And then I was just working on… I was just warming up. I was like, just start slow. Warm up. I was like, ah, I know what to try. Because there's no chance. But but it landed on my feet. And I rolled away. And I was like… Yeah, so, that happened so first great. go in practice. Yeah. Um, awesome. So so the, uh, the spinning thing. It wasn't like it dawned on me one day. But I would say… That, you know, you were, I was two. You did a 900. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a core memory? Oh That's a core God. memory. I was already laughing. There's no just, way. When he said no you way. were, I was two. Both. I was already laughing. I don't even so, care about the rest of the story. So I. Fucking two, dude. He knew, he knew when he was two that you did a 900. Well, then I was three and got a I got, skateboard. I got drunk that night and and hooked up with Sandra Bullock. <laughs> and then I realized in the morning that it wasn't Sandra Bullock. So you, you saw the 900 the a different way side. than me. Uh, <laughs> is that true? <laughs> I was like, that sounds I thought too it was specific a bit. Go, to be made up just now. I'm celebrating at the bar without Tony Hawk. By yeah, he's celebrating you. my trick. I'm, I was <laughs> celebrating his trick because we all made it. So I'm at the bar feeling real good about myself because we've just made the 900. <laughs> and I'm like, that's Sandra Bullock. I'm like, 
fuck it. You know, like, what have I got to lose? And I was like, hey, how's it going? Like, and she was so no, nothing in your conversation made you realize it probably wasn't? I was trying to act cool and not bring up the fact that she was Sandra Bullock. So I didn't bring that up. But a friend of mine came over, another skateboarder. I won't say his name because the rest of the story that he doesn't want to. So he, he, he comes over and he's like, how's it going? And I'm like, it's pretty good. <laughs> and he's and I can tell he's like, Alice is talking to Sandra Bullock and oh they're fucking God. drinking and getting it on together. And I was like, yeah, it's my friend so-and-so. And she had a friend and we kept talking. And I was like, want to go back to the room? And she's like, yeah, I'll go back to the room. And I'm like, yes. So we go back to the room. We hang out all night. Some stuff happened a little bit. <laughs> Sandra Bullock's a first nighter. And then somebody opened the curtain a little bit and the cur- the sun was out. So I'm like, oh, wow, it's, it's the next day. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's bright. And the light is going across the room directly into her face. She's lying in the bed. And I'm like... And I look at her face and I'm like, wait, that's not fucking Sandra Bullock. <laughs> and I look at my friend and my friend is like, dude, that ain't Sandra Bullock. <laughs> you guys both we both realized at the same time. Jason Ellis from Hawk vs. Wolf eats food. I'm also very busy. I'm in a hurry. I do a lot of stuff. So does Tony. I don't have time for you know all these shenanigans. Sometimes I want food and I want it fast and I want to put it in something where I heat it up for two minutes and then it feeds me and it tastes good. And here's the big one. It's good for you. So that I eat it real quick because I'm in a hurry. I got to drive down the ramp and I want to skate. If I have something real quick from fast food restaurant and I go to the ramp, it's not going to be a good session. This is where factor comes in. Factor is meal prep, baby. And they show up to your door. They've got all different kinds of stuff. Keto, vegan, you name it, whatever, smoothies, all these different things to choose from. 30 grams of protein. You know, they, they, add, they add it up. They give you what you need to get through your day. And it tastes really good. Uh, I have had it and I'm kind of pissed that I don't have more. Hey, Factor, what's up? Uh, head to go.factor75.com slash wolf130. That's a lot, you guys. Try to remember it, though. Use code WOLF130 and get $130 off across across six boxes. It's worth remembering. That's code WOLF130 at, ready everybody? Go.factor75.com slash WOLF130 for $130 off. Thanks, Factor. Oh, mate. New sponsor alert. Support for today's episode comes from True Classic. The brand new sponsor has the absolute best fitting t-shirts a man can buy. Finding the right t-shirt with the big uh, big old guns or a little bit of a dad bod is incredibly frustrating. Most shirts are way too tight in the wrong place or look way too big and boxy. If you're spending c- countless hours at the gym trying to look good, why not spend five minutes and finally get a t-shirt that fits? Uh, True Classic has already helped over 2 million men finally get a better fit at an affordable price. Our listeners access, ex- uh, access to the absolute best deal they offer. For a limited time, get 25% off with the code WOLF at trueclassic.com. These guys have sent me t-shirts. I don't really have a dad bod, but it's there a little bit. And, and they're really nice t-shirts. And the test to me is you wash it and put it back on. Is it still the same t-shirt? And it is. So I'm here to tell you so. It's about time you learn how to dress yourself properly. Upgrade your wardrobe with True Classic. Get 25% off at trueclassic.com with the code WOLF. Free shipping include on purchase over $100. That's 25% off everybody at trueclassic.com with the code WOLF. Sorry, strengthen your core wardrobe with True Classic today. And it was nine hours after I was wow. positive that it turned out the person that it was was. Um... <laughs> Choose your words wisely. <laughs> so, yeah, it turned out it wasn't Sandra Bullock. So, anyway, you so, hit a 900. He is, did a 900. Is, you were two. two. This is 99. And I almost made out with Sandra Bullock, <laughs> but it turned out not. Uh, and then I got a, I got a skateboard the next year. 
right? So, so I was three when I started skating. My older brother uh, loved your video game as soon as it came out. So we played your video games all the time. I was skating. And then my first skate park, my first indoor skate park I went to had a vert ramp. So this is all by five, six years old. I've, you know, I've had the video game. You're doing wow. your thing. I'm skating vert. It's like, what? Did I, you skateboard at all when you were two? Three. When I was three. So the, the 900, but you were watching it, it. it. No, no, no. It just had already. So when I stepped on a skateboard, that had already happened and it was fresh. And so it was just 900s left and right. But you because, already knew that was a 900. Well, you could down left B, I think it was in the game. Oh, in the game. Oh, right down circle. Right down circle. There we go. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> who's counting? Oh, my God. Um, so you're 54, dude. <laughs> right down circle. I mean, uh, granted, you probably, it's your game, but you were a character. You don't know your special moves. Oh wait, I had you a were special a move. Character? I didn't have a special move. Well, your character came with default moves. I had a. I had. I was in the game, secret skater. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. American Waste. Yeah, but yeah. all characters come with default special moves. It might have been someone else's special move, but you still had it. Oh man. See, oh, no, I, make fun of me. Yeah. You don't even know your own special move. Kind of like me more than you for that. Sorry, <laughs> it's a compliment. <laughs> he doesn't even know his special move. Okay, yeah. yeah, I was a great. Thank you again for that. That was one of the greatest afternoons of my life when we unlocked it at Colin's house and all these other dudes were like, "Fucking what? You're." I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> motherfucker, you're not." <laughs> Everybody there. There was like a bunch of people there that sh- like could have been in the game. Been in the game, yeah. And I was like, "Nope, I am." <laughs> what? How? I, uh, uh, I don't know. It was awesome. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Enough then, about us. <laughs> it's hard to, to duck. <laughs> Sorry. It's one of my um, favorite topics. So, so then, yes. And then this is when… Uh, okay, but I, I understand that that you saw that kind of thing. Yep. You saw it spinning, yep. whatever. But, but it's something about that you got so comfortable with it mm-hmm. that you could just throw the, the most difficult, most dangerous variations of it and then… That leads to the world record spinning. Okay, so, so I think the two things outside of skateboarding that really helped. I played a bunch of sports. Uh, played football, played basketball. I did gymnastics, so I did like trampolines. Uh. I would do like I would just jump into the onto the mat, not the foam pit, but I would just jump into the mat like ten feet high, do a flip, and see how many spins I could do. And I would just do that for like hours a day. So I thought yeah. it was fun. So I could yeah. get. I could lock in and just get that feeling of those. I wouldn't even know how many times I went around. So I'd be doing that. And then skating mega at 14, 15, I just started the nine. I mean, I did just go for a nine right after I learned the five. So as long as I've been doing fives on mega, I've been spinning the nines. So then you did a 540 on the mega ramp, and then the same day you spent a nine? Yeah, I did. I did two fives and then did a nine a couple, like maybe four or five tries later. The first one that I made. So I'm saying, it, wow, spin, yeah, it was it, spin king, man. I almost don't, I don't like know you. if there's, a, like I don't know if there's cool. a really an, a good answer for how that works. Well, I, you already answered it. It's the gymnastics, it's the gymnastics, and then that. Well, if and you then, can see all those spins, mm-hmm. you can see two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you turn your back to the ramp twice, yeah. and uh, so then by the time now, you know, now I'm. Here and I've been doing nines and I made it a thing to make sure I do one every year, you know, kind of no matter what it takes. On a regular vert ramp. On a anything. anything. If it's a mega ramp, if it's a mini mega ramp, if it's vert ramp, whatever. Just throw one a year and and roll away. Uh, so then you know, ten years of that, and all of a sudden you get the feel for it. At different, you know, at I did one at like five six. I did one at. Now I'm like six foot. I've done one on a small ramp, on one that's too big. I've done it really high. I've done them low. So you get that feel for it. And then I guess there's just maybe some confidence with it that when it's time to really rip it, I kind of have a a lot to pull from. And I know kind of what… I know not to lean forward too much off the lip. And I know to go fast enough and to not rip it too hard late. So as long as I can kind of do that, you know, it's worth eating shit over and just kind of you know, stand like on so. It. So you know, when you take off, it's all systems go. Yep, yep. As lo- you know, as long as because what will happen is if I lean forward too much, 
then it then the whole thing starts rocking in the air. You feel like yeah. you're leaning forward and then back and then forward and then back. And then it and comes then you, around you come down super nose straight, dive. Yeah, nose dive. Yeah. Um, or if I or if I take off with a good spin and I just lose the uh like you stop relaxing, you know, get my gum in, am I coming? And then you try to rip it in, then you then you can fishtail and all these weird yeah. things happen. Um, or shoot out. Yep. When you spin past the 900, so is it, it's 1080? 1080 is so, one more, but then the 1260 right, is ten, forward. It's baby forward. step. It. So nine, then around again, another 360. The mm -hmm. first time you tuck your shoulder in to do the third rotation, was there, did it feel right for the first time or was there an adjustment? 1080s on the bigger ramp feel a lot like the 900 on the, on the smaller ramp. Because you still only turn your back to the ramp twice. Because like, don't you have to? Don't you kind of? Oh yeah, we're, okay. we're getting to the weeds here. But don't you? Uh, like a, a few people do sevens this in this way where where they get under it right away, like Danny, and it turns into pretty much a McTwist. It's not a flat spin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you're going ten eighty, I feel like you have to do that to a different extreme, or the, do you not? The flat spin. No, I'm just talking about when you snap. So, so you know Simon Tabron, right? Yeah, he rode here all the time. He, we went to the to the workshop when I was learning sevens on how to get that. That's the workshop. Like we kind of just hung out for days trying to kind of break it apart. How to get that really good snap flat spin off the lip, and we for a 1080 for just for sevens when I was first okay. working on them, which really unlocked the the 1080 later, and it was going. A little bit alley oop into it, so oh so you so you come a little bit alley oop. So when you kind of hit that coping to lock in for the rotation, it kind of sits and then oh, it kind of it's, it's, it's the way that you sort of push on one side for a nollie heel flip. Yep, where you yep. You're, spring load you're it, your, spring yeah, load it, and right. it and it Got can it. explode yep. really easy. But if you can figure out that balance, it kind of snaps you up, and then you're just sitting there. You're not doing that carvy kind of softer spin yeah, yeah. it's a really like preloaded explosion and then you just get into it and it just spins like a top yeah so it, once it's the same as moto when but, you but seat bounce shit. i get all but that yeah. but I, I think that the part and and for the record i never even tried 1080 because i got so worked trying to learn 900s <laughs> yeah um, but uh but what i'm wondering is is when you start getting into that and then you do 1260 how do you know when you're when it's time to open up well, that's that's gymnastics. Uh, that's, that's the gymnastics. Where, well, that's where the years of it's where the years of sevens and fives and all that come in. Cause I can because I know where seven is. So I come up to it going way too fast and spinning way too hard at a seven. Right. And then spin right through it. And then now that's the So the only seven thing is that, happening before the apex. The seven well, all I know. Or, is that my head as I I do know where 720 is. Okay. So if I go at a seven a little too fast and spin too hard and hold it right through the seven, we're right. I mean, it's it's right now the next thing's right around mm -hmm. the corner. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I'm <laughs> right around the corner. Yeah, it's not like I'm trying to really figure out 1080. And that's what I do for nines. It was go too fast, go, you know, and I was doing that big five in that same spot. Yeah. For the two days before. And every time I did it, I was just kind of… You're talking about at Vert Alert. At Vert Alert. Yeah. yeah. So I knew that was my 900 no, spot. No, uh, yeah. We could tell the, with the setup. Yeah. Like, oh, so it, it was like, that's what I did. I just do that and then spin right through five and then stand on it. You know, it's not like… But I'm, your precision of the landings is what amazes me. That's that's what it is. So like, There's it, not too much room for error on a nine though, right? Mm -mm. Like if you don't land dead… Straight, you're fucked. But Landed he, but a little he too low. Always land straight. That's what I'm saying. It's I've, just like, I've stepped on it and smashed, and right. you know it. It you had fish tailed around. It had well, just one, just one where I landed too low, over rotated. Oh yeah, stepped on it the same way. You know, straight legs like we're rolling away and just got crushed. Yeah. Um, and that's scary because I mean, it's once you're in, you're in. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's like, I, I learned the hard way that you can't just give up on a nine halfway through. Yeah. No. <laughs> You've got no, to, you have to you keep gotta going. go with the spin no matter yeah. what. Okay. And I don't want to dwell on all of this, but when you did a 1260, it was 
for one thing, one of the most underrated moments in in any skate event in X Games, whatever. Yes, they made a a relatively big deal about it, but it it was game changing as far as I'm concerned. It it showed that you are on a totally different level of spatial awareness and what's possible and and bravery and risk taking and the and when I was I was I'm pretty sure I was on the mic when it happened. Where was that? You you weren't you you were on the mic for the 1080 with Corbin Harris. Oh, you're right. I wasn't there. That you, that was when things got weird with X Games. Yeah. yeah. So I was unfortunately I wasn't there, but I saw it. And I saw everyone's angle of it uh-huh. in, the, in the audience and whatever. But the look that you have when you land it is like you cannot escape the intensity. Like he couldn't even, did you see it? I mean, I saw it, but I didn't see his face after. His face after is like, he's still just in it because it, it was, it took so much. I'm, I'm speaking for you on your behalf, but Please. I just want to see what I, what, tell you what I saw. It, it took so much intensity to get there. It's like he couldn't release it. Yeah. So he's still in it, going down the wall, like, yeah, like, am I still alive? Is it really happening? It's a fair fucking thing to set to it was ask yourself. Unreal, yeah, that's right. I wasn't on the mic, but um, but I just, I just want to no say, no one has attempted that, correct? Uh, Not even I, an attempt. I, maybe that one kid, Asher, right? Asher Bradshaw. Oh yeah, he used to he used to spin nines at the combi, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's when we had nines and pools. Yeah, but I but, never saw. Any- so anyway, I just want to say it was an unreal moment. I still am amazed to this day. And when people, I do interviews, like I just did an interview um, uh, this, with CNN two days ago and they, they want to bring up 900 and 900. And I was like, yeah, well, we're like two spins past that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. And we're, 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 well, no, we're one spin past that. But I was just like, yeah, Mitchie Briscoe did 1260. Like, well, and, and it's still, it's like, it's too unreal for people to yeah, register. I, that's, that's what, what it I is. think. I don't think people understand. Because when people it. say like, "Oh, 1080," like, "Oh, oh," so that would be three times. Like, yeah, well, well, we're on to 1260s now. Well, one guy, one guy is it. is on 1260s, and that's too much for them to comprehend. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's and, amazing. Well, and also I think a big difference is like your your 900 put a skateboard in every home in America, and <sighs> you know, so they, but the the nothing that. I do now will ha- you know change the culture like that you know so, I just, I think it's it, people can't relate to it as much I, I just the think 900, it's, it's, yeah. there was like seven people that were spinning them we'd been working on them for years and it was like if he cracks it it didn't like what you're doing, no one's even trying to crack it. No one right. was yeah. even. It is. It's you so just far did it beyond. Before yeah. anyone even, it's so 1080s was was only you and Tom, Tom Char, right? right? Yeah. I mean that that's that's how elite it was. Only two people mm-hmm. are even trying to get Sean White for a minute mm-hmm. when he skated, um, and then uh, but then you just skyrocketed past everyone with twelve sixty. Anyway, I didn't want to dwell on that, but I just want to say it was it was incredible, and I was I'm just thankful that you were there to do something like that. Thank yeah. you. And you were right though, like those months before, because I tried. I tried to in Shanghai at the Mega Ramp event before that. And that How'd was they go. In uh did you get around? It got around. All right. And so But did you go around with intent? Dude, I I should have just stood on it. But it but it, it ended up being the right way to do it in Minnesota and all that, but I could have just stood on it. Yeah. Um and but since then I knew the cat was out of the bag. And uh. I I know me. And that I wouldn't have wanted to let that one just sit out there for too long, chasing it and turn into some weird thing where, you know, I'm chasing 1260s every couple of years. And is it going to, it was like, I kind of, as soon as I tried one, I was like, how do I make this? So I, so this is done with. So in Minnesota, did you actually practice one? No. So in Minnesota, (laughs) so in, so in those three months, I lit, I, kind of isolated pretty heavily. I skated a lot. I watched every single 900 and 1080 that I had on film and edited. How many 1080s have you done? Uh, had you done at that point? Uh, there was there was two. So all two of them. And then the 720s in different years at vert contest, the 720s that, you know, messed up. I knew there was one one year where I was shaped a little different and 
the 1080s look different and some 900s look different. So it's way more methodical. Than so I put them all together. Like, if you're not like that, you're not doing a 1080. Yeah. <laughs> or 1260. Like, sorry. Tw- yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I put them Jeez. together and I was going like frame by frame at seeing what I was doing at the lip and seeing how I was taking off and seeing how they were coming around and just trying to come up with like a really good plan. So I could so I could stand on it and it was worth whatever happened after that. You know, because if I went without a plan and just start spinning like that and just, you know, break something, it's really not. That's not the way my head works. Like if I have a good enough plan, I can handle that kind of injury. But, you know, 17 feet on mega and spinning around is like, I want a good plan. So I came up with one. I knew the, I knew the takeoff and I knew how to hold it. And I knew what it was like to spin that nine up and then to let, oh and then to God. let that, because that, because that last 360, you're coming down yeah. and then your back turns. And then you just feel, you feel like you're coming, you feel like that last spin is so deep in the in the ramp already and i just knew that existed that feeling existed spinning past the coping spinning like yeah, yeah kind of spinning all the way up and then it it really feels like the spin slows down and you're getting real deep and running out of time and like so i just knew that you know how do you not throw it away there you know where do you have to go here to feel that and to still but only stand you know that. on it only you know that. Yeah, right. <laughs> None of us so, know that. So it was it was intense. And and you know, right before the contest and everything, there was I was just looking around. I'm usually pretty like I can feel contests. Like I get adrenaline, I'll sweat, I'll, my my palms will get sweaty, I'll be like my mouth will get dry. And I was there and I was like not feeling anything. And the contest was about to start. And I was like, it was just a little too much. And I remember asking, I remember saying to myself, like, Whatever, like, you know, whatever you feel, like, you got to feel it now. Like, do you want to be here? Is this, is this you choosing your path or did you just end up a cogwheel in some weird adventure of now you're doing 1260s in front of everyone? Like, you need this, you need to make this choice. And I was lucky that I was the only guy dropping in from the, from the bottom of the 50 footer because everyone else, all nine other guys were on the 70. And I swear, I got like complete rush of, like I sobbed. Like I got a complete rush of emotion. This is all before. This is all before the contest. Just like, what are you doing here? Kind of thing. And then, then it clicked. I was like, uh, you wouldn't feel like that if you, like, you wouldn't feel like that if you didn't want to be here. And then it was no holds barred. Just drop in 100%, spin 100, hold it, stand on it. It was ready. How many tries? Three there. So five total. Yeah, it's crazy. Were the first couple close or was it a, were you building confidence the, or they the weren't right? First one I ever spun, the board was really loose. The first one in Shanghai, the board was really loose. The second one, I I bailed out mentally on that last rotation once everything started to get real deep, but I knew that it was there. Um and then in Minnesota, I uh over rotated the first one. Well, like technically speaking, like I didn't land backwards, but I just spun too much. Uh, and then I popped too hard on the second one. So the third one, the deal I made with myself was was, was drop in 100 with, with 100% speed. You're fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Holy it, shit. It makes me nervous. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, like, yeah, so drop in 100% speed, overshoot the gap, land Pump as hard as you can. Why overshoot the gap? Because you don't want to go too high. Because because here because I needed I needed to be in, drop like drop in, pump that first transition. I know what you're saying. Float if over you the land gap. lower, you, it's a little less speed. No, That's you, what I'm get, saying. you get less more. Speed speed, in, you get more you speed for you jumping. More speed if you land pipe? deep, if you land deep on the landing, really, mm-hmm, you get more speed. I had to be told. I didn't find that. That's what I, I yeah. was. I was if over. I, if I ever landed right on the knuckle, I, I'd way. be like, "Fuck!" Uh, yeah, I got too much speed. Exactly. Yeah. Really? Same. Yeah. I, hey, maybe you're a different we, breed. Maybe though. I wasn't, but I thought I was, and it would make me panic on Same. the way up. Same. Wow. But I feel like a lower landing was more of a solid pump into it. Like my legs felt more stable if I did. If I land up on the knuckle, I'd be like, it was too much time. I that don't makes know. sense. Yeah. But what? So you're saying you. Well, yeah. Get. So then overshoot it. So I'm like mentally, I'm, I'm, in, I'm. Do you want tricky doing over the gap? Switch, 
backside 180 with like a melon grab. It was a, yeah. So then, so then get through that landing and pump my face off at the quarter and then let it go. And then this is where I need to relax because I was over popping. I was over spinning. I was just like, what a, what an issue to like have where the thing I need to do is relax a bit. So that's why I gave it so much early. So I could maybe trust that and then just take off and try to not get too far out and spin too much and just… He's really good at explaining stuff. Like he does trick tips and stuff and it's like just easier to understand and and it's more… I trust his theories on how to make things because of the way he breaks it down to the point where I sit right before I got knocked out. I was like, hey man, I'm going to try fives tonight. I would love… If you could give me your opinion, because I know that he'd be like, if you're little this or mm-hmm. little that, mm-hmm. or try to turn your shit. Like I know that if I, because if I just listen to that, I'll block out the rest of my my worries about that <laughs> yeah. trick. Yeah, like, well, I just keep your shoulder, and I'll think about my shoulder and not think about getting racked. We should start Mitchy Spin School. It's not a bad idea. I would go to it. I really would. Obviously, us old guys, we're just looking to spin five again. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But I want to go to Mitch's spin school to make my 540. Yeah. I would feel better if you were there for it. I was seriously. looking forward to it. And I didn't know you ended up on the floor yeah. until the next okay, day. Okay, so you, you're you riding away. Oh, yeah. So then, so then riding away. And you are… I mean, obviously, I guess that makes sense. But you're the only one who really was able to put it into words without explaining like… I was too… The months of stress and prep and then the fear, you know, wondering if it's over, wondering if I'm safe, what's going to happen next. There was like, no release. There was… I could. I was just… My lasers coming out of my eyes and like it was really… It was really intense. Also, existentially, I knew that 1260 was like one of the biggest goals I'll probably ever accomplish in my life. Uh, and that's just weird to do. It's weird when you hit a milestone that big. And you're so young. For yourself that you're like, you know, what, you know, what mm. happens You said now? you overspent one. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Revert? <laughs> fucking, anything's fucking possible, forward, dude. Forward to fakey, forward, forking forward. That whole conversation sounded like fucking… A crazy person. <laughs> fucking, I'm deep uh, in the, still rotating deep in the, deep in the, what the fuck? You're back <laughs> to the ramp and you're past the coping from 17 feet. That last deep spin. I'm like, dude, I feel like we're fighting sharks over here. Like, this guy's fighting sharks. Fucking deep. Uh, fuck that. Oh uh, Yeah, but it, was, but it was intense. It definitely wasn't. God, an emotional rush. So good. Like at all. Almost like really almost overwhelming. Next couple of weeks were a lot. But I mean slowly since then I think I've been just so like so much gratitude. you able to process it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So much gratitude. It took a long break from skating after that. I mean, wait, what is that? That's five years ago? That was 29. So, that was right before COVID. That was oh, the last damn. comp before yeah. the world wow. shut down a few months after. Wow. Which another blessing that I just put it down when I did because the, the mega contests are not even on the right. horizon right now. So crazy. Would you would you do it again? Uh, that's so hard to answer. I mean, we need a met, we need a ramp like that uh, and good that type of feel again. You know, if I mean you build you build the ramps, we will come. I like I like Elliot's I like Elliot's ramp. It just seems like a lot to take on a. 1260 there. there. Um, and I also really like the idea of trying… And that's part of the reason I try to add, you know, the the varial flip McTwist and different… I'd love to learn a different seven. I'd love to learn, you know, all these other things. The switch fives are super important to me. Oh my… Okay. Th- thank you for saying that. Yeah. Th- another moment at Vert Alert was your line. You did a switch five, which no one does. Mm-hmm. Into a 720. Into a 720. Mm-hmm. And when you want to talk about it, to just give an example of what what vert skating is and and the level of it, that in itself sums it up to me. Yeah, you know, a, no one's doing switch five. No one's doing switch five in park. No one's doing switch five mm-hmm. anywhere really. And then you throw it into something else. Like I, it, anyone else would be happy with 
Switch Five, like that's my video ender. Yeah, I Good was. Night. I got asked to be a guest announcer at one of those X Games things in the East Coast or something, and I hadn't seen bird skating in a while. And I was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll get on the mic." And I was in the watching the prompter thing, and he did that, and I so close almost just said, "What the fuck?" <laughs> on the TV, <laughs> on the yeah, because I'm I'm watching, yeah. and I'm like, you know, like I know. You know, I know fakie to fakie fire. I know you guys can do some, you know, I know a couple of yeah. people do a nine and and you just do, you did. I'm like, that was a legit switch 540. And then he went into a seven. I was like, I don't know who was sitting next to me, but I was like, what the fuck is going on? Does he do that on the, does he do that? Yeah. Is that the kid from the mega? And they're like, well, you don't know. And I'm like, I don't know. No, I don't know. <laughs> Like that shit, I don't remember any of that contest. I don't know what city I was so in. Great. But Good. I remember that you did a fucking switch 540 into a 720. Okay, and at the at the heart, I mean, and and we obviously appreciate that, but but a deeper appreciation, and this is like from a skater's perspective, switch alley oop yep. is one of the yeah. sickest things. Yeah. It's I know it's it's a it's a somewhat basic regular trick. It it's not gonna move the needle in terms of public spec whatever you know so sketchy public well, yeah acknowledgement but when we see it as vert skaters we're all like in awe of it it's amazing well the uh the switch five has been a really long process of you know learning how to skate switch uh you know a little bit like i learned how to skate originally mm -hmm. you know because to come out of a five to be able to get that your front leg in the ramp yeah. without that shoulder kind of right. dragging you down. It, it took a lot. And so that switch alley-oop actually was one of the main tricks that kind of unlocked that ability to get that front leg out in front of you. Because if you take off and you turn the shoulder and then you get stuck and then you can't get it in, where learning how to really take off and trusting going up, 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 letting that crossbone set in, that back knee come down, and then that front leg in front I love how you it down. <laughs> like my experience is, I made two switch make twists in my life. One was at the Plan B ramp, and one was at our birdhouse ramp in a full squat. And then I tried to do it for the end, landed on my back, and I was like, I'm never trying that trick again. Wow. Yeah. I had no breakdown of it the way he does. Yeah. It was like I landed on my back one time. Nope. Yeah, I'm not even not sure me. why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. like I don't know. I, like, yeah. like I went to spin and my body was like, you don't spin that way. No. Yeah. Uh, but I then, love how he's like, no, you got to bring your back foot and you to this because well, you can yeah. see it. Well, and the, he knows the, it. The, the stale three, the stale three. So that's the same grab, the finishing of the rotation of the switch five. Then the alley. So uh, that's what I would do here. Uh, I, I came yeah, here, yeah, yeah. I came here five like days a week. I get that. Bring it around. So uh, I would do it oh, right you're here. you're so into the weeds now. That was this it's whole fucking episode. Three, yeah. switch alley-oop, and then just spin those fives yeah, If you don't skate, day. trust me, this dude's really good. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't caught on yet. <laughs> I'm I'm amazed. Well, every time. I mean, and, and, and the thing is, is every time I see you skate here, it looks like all that stuff is possible. It looks like yeah. you could just snap into it, and you do a lot of the times. And it's like, what? No one's even here. You're not in a contest. Yeah, but that's I. I can, like, you do it here with nobody. You can do it in the contest. Absolutely, and I get he that. You can tell he puts his he right. puts himself to the test. He puts in the work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing that, um, you know, when it gets to that level and that much to ask that much of your body. You're not, it's, you know, it used to be like, I love it. I go to the ramp and, and if things happen, they happened organically. I didn't even know I was going to learn a new trick today. But that's for basics shit, you know? Like, but yeah. if you're trying to get doing stuff where your body's just going to fight against you the whole time, that's, that's, re it's like teach, it's like I, I talk with American accent from now on, from here on out. Yeah. You don't, you don't get that from just like every night you fucking try a couple words it's all day, nonstop, your whole life. That's it. Like, uh, you know, drive, like drive, steer, uh, switch stance fighters. Yeah. Th there's very few that switch stance and are just as dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most of us, myself included, when I switch, 
I got like one or two things that yeah. I do in that stance and then I get the fuck back into my yeah, other yeah. stance yeah. because my brain is like, hey man, you can't defend yourself <laughs> standing the other side. Like, <clears throat> We're at the generation of, of a switch front side air was like the sick switch trick you did. Yeah, I was run. like, Bob's putting too much work in. Calm yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm over here trying to have a beer after the contest <laughs> and you're doing switch backs uh, it is. Easy. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, it's... it's uh, it's endlessly impressive, and Thank I didn't you. want to just dwell on your just spinning, but wow, you are the spin king. Um, t- uh, th- someone reminded me of this recently, and I don't know if you want to talk about it. If you don't, we cut it out, but um, you went through a whole thing with vertigo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Holy. And Ear- how did that happen? Earlier this year. You were on my show. I didn't, co- I didn't cover that? You didn't mention that? Uh, I must not have. No, he was on the Jason Ellis show. We were, we were like talking about. about. No, I'm cool with it. Um, and it scared me because I was here doing a backside. I just dropped in backside air. That's what Jimmy said. And then I ended up. Uh, I'm looking at the coping this way, facing backwards. Board's gone, and I just landed, you know, backwards on my on my stomach, and like had trouble walking. Like, I just I lost it, just like that. And no idea what happened. My brain skipped a beat. And then I was screwed. I was scared. Every night, every morning, waking up. For how long? uh, Eight weeks, maybe. Six weeks. Eight weeks. Yeah. and this Eight was weeks. This is February. So you go to the doctor this year, right? Yeah. Yeah. Blood tests and added salt to my diet. Movement where they… They like didn't help your- me with it, but they gave me videos to lay my head off of the side of the bed. And and then so February, March, and then uh, April for that Japan X Games was like one of the first times back on my board in those in those eight did, months. Did it, did it suddenly click back or was it just gradual? There were some good days and bad days. And no. then actually earlier this month, I got, uh, I got LASIK. Yeah, and I think I I couldn't wear contacts. My I can't really touch my eyes, and the astigmatism is bad. And um, I think my eyes started to have a lot of trouble focusing, especially indoors, the low light. Um, so I got LASIK on the fifth, and then I prioritized that over uh, over skating. I mean, I took a, those two weeks off up and pretty much until Vert Alert came around. Um, just to make sure. So I have good days and bad days, you know. Wait, so it still comes. It still it still comes. I'll feel like it like a, it feels like a low. Like I went and get got blood work one day, and my blood pressure was like so low for my age that there were like yeah, if we, if we don't find anything and salt doesn't help, like we're gonna have to just start scanning shit, seeing what's up. And I'm just but like they found some. No, no. I mean, I just, just add. I just make sure I. I make sure I'm way over hydrated and add a bunch of salt to my diet. I eat a lot. And yeah, it helped. Like you know, I take my time and you know, dark room, let my eyes rest. You know, uh. I still have to do that. Um, but it seems like it's slowly coming. Do you think that LASIK is going to help because you don't have to strain your eyes? Yes. Yes. I had a that, lot. I had the same thing you did. I barely passed the driving eye test when I was 16, and then. I, got LASIK. I did the eye test four times yesterday. I failed my motorcycle license <laughs> oh my seven God. times. Well, what I used to do, my I used to I used to wait in line at the DMV and squint and memorize all the lines. Yeah, yeah that's what I was trying to do. <laughs> she was like looking at me, and I was like, "Yes, yes." But as soon as she'd look away, I'd be like, "Hey." Eh. Yeah. And anyway, yeah. and it worked. I got it was a hack. I had a couple, t- a couple times, but then w- when I was around your age, I um I got LASIK and suddenly it was like twenty twenty. Boom. It's and gone life now. Was a so lot, life Twenty was... years on from that, so can you get it again, or it doesn't work? I like could that? get it again, but then I will lose either my near vision or my far vision, depending on how they adjust it. Nope. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of okay. Yeah, I think you are too. If but I anyway, can. enough about us. But I just wonder if maybe that they they just don't know what causes. So it's not like it was your eye strain. And you don't. No one gave me any. But answers. it really it happened like that. It happened in a backside air. It happened. When I was walking up the stairs before that run, I was like, I'm having a bit of trouble. Let me Weird. just let me just get in the ra- sorry. Let me just get in the ramp and then I'll feel it out what I want to do. And I couldn't do my first backside air. And that's what I that's the thing that scared me the most is like I couldn't trust the most basic thing. So like my board, looking at my board for the next two months was like, 
am I gonna just shit myself when I do a backside air and end up backwards? Feel. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like right now. <laughs> it's, scary. <laughs> it's scary, you know. And even like, it's I make sure I warm up slow. I make sure I don't get too ahead of myself. Uh. I kind of get off on confusing myself I, on I the ramp, so it's weird. It's so wild that you have that experience, and then you can just throw a nine hundred in the Utah heat. Oh my God! With two minutes on left, Saturday, in a forty-five yeah, minute like jam. with it just. <laughs> <laughs> he Dude, thought of was, all of it. Yeah. He thinks of all yeah. of it. I couldn't deal with it, dude. I just, <laughs> I'm like, ignorance is bliss. I'm just like, how much talk? I don't know. Talk. Go again? I'll go again. <laughs> don't go? Okay, fucking, I guess I won't I guess, go. I guess, I guess we're done. Like, my spin, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm still here. So I, think I, <laughs> I think I went all the way around. <laughs> I don't know what's I happening. Think, I think I'm somewhere in the middle of you guys. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when I fucking dropped in and slammed because my heart skipped and I panicked when I dropped in and you were like, what did you just do? And oh, I was wait, like, wait, oh, like your yeah. face gets all flushed and you can't think. Mm, and I don't know. We were talking. We are just skating, him, him and I, and I went to drop in and my heart skipped. And I'm a bit over, past it now, but when, right when it was still happening, I would just like freak out. Mm -hmm. So like it skipped right as I went to drop in. I was like… And I just forgot about my legs and shoulder blocked the flat. And he was like, what did, what was that? I'm like, I don't know. My heart jumped, panicked. But I, on the way up the stairs, I was like, even if you're having a heart attack, make the drop in. <laughs> yeah. Then have a heart mind, attack. Mind over matter. Yeah. A little bit. Like, holy shit, press the panic button a little too <laughs> yeah. soon. Oh, you wouldn't want on your, like, you wouldn't want it to seem like you died from falling on a drop-in. Yeah. Yeah, no, get, yeah. Yeah. Survive that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember. If I do, don't say that. <laughs> It Say was, he dropped in, did a 540, and then died. <laughs> <laughs> With a big smile on his face. He, For the record, he made it across he the flat it. bottom. He made it. was legit. Oh, he got up on the deck and danced a little. <laughs> <laughs> and then… <laughs> He died doing what he loves. That's, that's it. <laughs> Tombstone, baby. <laughs> I remember when… When it, X game was all, it was it was mega, and there was Park, and there was Verd, and everyone's bouncing around to every single discipline. And we um, were skating bobs at the time because I was kind of jumping into the practice sessions and whatnot. And I started skating bobs regularly, and came here to skate Verd, dropped in and slammed in the next wall. No, yeah, because the timing was so off, and it, and I, my my head just got in that space. I don't know how you guys do it. When you have to do it the same day, that's rough. I that's mean, that's rough, right? I mean, that's rough. And it's always better to go from small to big. Of course, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, because your timing. Yeah, I timing remember the first time too. I did that and being, I was like, wait, why is vert way harder than mega yep. ramp? Yeah, my board, everything that I made adjustments to. Yeah, I remember thinking, we're going over to the little ramp. Yeah, in, in my so head, much harder. In my head, I thought yep. I was going to treat it like a little ram. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'll be less intimidated. I, thought, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my God. I, <laughs> I'm going to kill myself. Yeah, this is not, way now. And now yeah. where's the landing zone? Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, no yeah, landing yeah, zone. Yeah, yeah, you can't yeah. see anything yeah. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's all happening too fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mitchy, what's next? Yeah. What is next? That's a that's a good question. I mean, there's, a, there's some… There's a few contests left over, but… But what's next in the at, bigger picture of things? Yeah, at home, I'm like you said, I'm gonna start leaning into a lot of those trick tips and doing that and then doing a lot better at kind of like pursuing that because a lot of it comes naturally up here, but it gets all stuck here. So, mm. you know, I have a goal, I have a goal to hit and how many videos I wanna do in the next a month or six weeks or so. Um, I really like my podcast. I really like doing it. It's helped me, it's helped me grow a lot. Uh, publicly like with with because do you all, get good feedback i get good feedback and i've gotten really like some really intimate messages because i've covered a lot of topics you know like uh depression and anxiety and i've been in therapy for you know a couple of years now and a lot of my guests are super open and cool so it's really a lot on mental health i think that's super important and i've been through the ringer with that so it's like yeah yes pretty easy for me to to open up about now. But it's nice to be on the podcast because I grew up doing media and it was always uh, smile, be unproblematic. Don't really, you know, they don't really care about you. They want like to uh, sell something. 
<coughs> and so I really made this podcast. What, what my vision was in the, the beginning was like, what do I need to hear in six months, you know, from me? It's like, if, no, if nobody listens, I can go back and replay an episode, you know, and I, at least I told the truth. At least I can, you know, at least I can be there for me in that way. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of been my vision with it. And now I'm like 36 episodes in and slowed down a little bit because I want like some really clean, like high quality guests and really like kind of a little bit more of a, of a path with that. Um, yeah, we're more quantity over quality. Mm -hmm. over Good here. for you, Tony. Right? Way to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't really give a fuck, you guys. We just keep talking. <laughs> no. I don't know how many episodes we've done. Are you still there? <laughs> um, and also… He does have a really good show. Thank you. I did it. And he, I've seen clips. Yeah. I've been interviewed by a lot of people. He did good. Thank you. Yeah. That's that's high praise. That is. He's been yeah. on a lot of shows. He's I'm actually more, good at that one. He's the so, more… So yeah, you're good. More hours of But don't be doing 1280s in podcasting and start running me into the ground. I'll come after you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking all of a sudden, he's got all this. The shit everyone loves his show. We're like, fuck you. You can't have 1080 and the biggest show. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's one or the other, dude. Which uh, one? You know, spin a lot or be a big podcast. <laughs> <laughs> don't be trying to take both. Um, and also what I've, I've been trying to do is get… I've just been trying to get in good shape so I can skate for a long time. I mean, I know when I was… When, after the 1260 and all this hit, I was so exhausted from this whole career. I mean, it beats you into the ground. Your hips get tight and then life comes at you fast. And then it's like, do you really want to throw yourself around like that? And I really got hit with that question. And, you know, outside of COVID in 2020, I really got hit with that question. And… I think right now I just want to be strong enough on and off my board to keep doing it. Like it's so fun. Those those events, those comps, meeting people, being on the ground, you know, it's just too fun, but it takes a lot. So, you know, I've just been trying to kind of get in shape and organize my life like that so it's so I can do it. Well, you're doing a good job yeah. at it. Thank you. Um and I mean, your well, your performances speak for themselves. But I, I feel like you you have come through to have a really good perspective on it and to pass on wisdom to others about yeah. it because that that's hugely important for especially for kids now. You know, like what's your best advice? And it's just like it's just so much. There's such a range of advice. Yeah, and yeah, I, I feel like you're in the pocket that you can give that advice and live it now too. You know, we're we're beyond that. Yeah, I, I'd be like, you know, you don't give up. And that's it. That's my, <laughs> that's, I don't that's have not, any. I don't have any techniques. Uh, yeah. I don't have any like uh, like strategies. I just know that uh, yeah, if it's really bad, don't give up. <laughs> I found that that seems to work. And you like you are like yeah. There's like a whole bunch of things that you could add to that that makes it much easier <laughs> to do that. And I'm like yeah, but really at the end of the day, if you don't give up, it's pretty much the same thing. So fucking listen to this dickhead, or at least I don't really care. You know, listen to whoever you want to listen to. <laughs> There you go. Life <laughs> advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, don't give up. Hey, you know something. If you get fired, you life coach. get another job. <laughs> <laughs> if your wife leaves you, get another wife. You know, it's pretty basic. You know, if you fall, get up, do it again. Maybe not the next day. That's my <laughs> advice. <laughs> that's, that's, that's your advice wisdom. for getting older. Yeah, that's, that's our that's advice for getting older. 50 kicking in right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe not the next day. Yeah. yeah. If you're just like, you don't really know who you are the next day, don't do that trick that day. <laughs> Wait till you know who you are again, then do some stretching because you never know who you are go. still. <laughs> the oracle. But, but once you stretch <laughs> Don't worry about and you the know face. that you are you and you see you in the mirror and you're like, that's who I expected to see, <laughs> it's fucking game on. Never give up. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> On that note, what's your worst injury? Oh, don't bite Richie. people. There you go. Don't bite oh, people. Oh, man. Yeah. My worst injury? Yeah, you got hit by a body jar this weekend, right? Yeah. Body jar. Same thing. Hung up on a body jar. Bruised my pelvis as a little teenager. Couldn't walk for three weeks. Uh, that inner hip, you know, when you yeah. put any weight on it and the inside of your hip just feels yeah. like it's broken. Um, and then I've had hip problems ever from since. That. Ever from since. That, yeah. yeah. That clicky, that clicky left hip. When I take that foot out and it just grinds. Do or, you have to, to eh. release it sometimes? Yep. Yep. You stand wow. there and try to just like get your body get to pop. unlock. Yeah. And then um, hip flexors get 
like if I don't warm up and I lift my knee up too fast, it'll just it's done it's crazy for the day. How there, there's such a, a swath of of possibilities and injuries and things that what we do, but a lot of us just get bested by the same exact thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, hang up body chart. <clears throat> I had I had dinner with uh, Ali Carnes, Rally Carnes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when I was in London. We're talking about injuries. Ali used to um, skate for Birdhouse, vert skater, super solid. Ali, what's up? Um, and uh, and we were talking about injuries, and and I said, oh yeah, you know, I broke my femur or whatever in March. He's like, oh yeah, I did the same thing. I was like, you broke your femur? He's like, I did the same thing. Go, what do you mean? He goes, I dropped into a 540, and I landed on the wall too soon, and I found myself sliding across the flat with my leg broken. I was like, wait, what? Wow. Unreal. Is this Same for, exact thing. When did both he of it? us don't remember exactly how we fell. We just know that we know that we were too low. We know yeah. we spin, we were spinning too slow and we both just broke our legs. But when did he do his? His was like, I think he said 10 or 15 years ago. Okay. Um, he was in his backyard alone. Oh, oh my God. And then had to yell for his neighbors to help him. I mean, you're in your backyard and you're alone and you're like, I'm going to do dropping five fractures fractures Sticking out. Yeah, I mean, I get that. I, that That's not the surprising part to me. Okay. Is that you're alone doing, like, I, I feel that. We I, do that? Yeah, I, I mean, I've done that here for sure. Done Very some, Matt don't Hoffman you have like a phone asked. on the, Matt Hoffman had a phone with him so he could he call He now the, has yeah. a thing in his helmet that will drop his pin to his family if his helmet hits the ground too hard. Well, that's next level. That's crazy. All right, now it's next. Next it's level. Not a, it's not stupid but, though. But it is. It is odd that we're all. You know. We. We. But I mean, that's that's the price you pay. Yeah. When, <sighs> hang up. I've hung up on my, my dude. Shirt it was. Body it jars. was Sergi. It was Sergi Ventroy. I was trying to learn body jars, and he goes, "Oh, keep that right arm straight." When You're you, focused when you on turn. your arm. And I focus on the arm, and then I'm on the flat bottom, and he comes up and he goes, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna put you over the deck a little more." And I was like. Laying. No, you gotta do surgery voice. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, man. Gotta put you over the deck no more. <laughs> but I'm already done. I'm already laying oh, there. Oh yeah. yeah, that's gonna happen. I probably should have told next you time. about that. Yeah. yeah. Man, I'm still if you get up, try it again. Next time, do this. Man, man, mine was somebody a fan of the Jason Ellis show acted like a fan of the Jason Ellis show before I dropped in, and I was like, God, what is with my fans? And then dropped in and was like, some people, man, you know. And then I'm in the body jar, so it was like, <laughs> so it was like I wasn't. You know, I mean, I was like. That's crazy. Is he really, he's blaming that dude. Yeah. I'm not blaming yeah. him. Dude, I'm not blaming him. I'm blaming me for okay. still thinking about that guy <laughs> in the middle of a body jar. Like what? And I was, I didn't think about any, because I'm still new and fresh. So I, when I do things where I hit my tail, I go, make sure your tail hits so you don't want to get yep. hit your head, but not, not at 10 in the morning. I was like, you know, I was like, we're going to, fl- where am I? What is happening? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Whatever. Wow. Well, Mitchie, thanks for uh, thanks for coming by. Thanks, thanks for, for being Mitchie Brisco. Thank you guys. It's great yeah, to be we alive appreciate and your, see you. We appreciate you. We appreciate your skating. Yep. Um, you're a good dude too. Thank you. Thank That's you. more important, believe it or not. I can't believe I just said that, but it is. You're a really good guy. I told your mom that the other day. Oh, that was nice of you. I'm happy you guys. So I'm based on his advice, don't quit. Don't give up. You never give up. Don't give up being a good dude. That's yep. right. That's it. That's, That's all you advice. have to do. That was good advice. That was. Yeah, there you us. go. That's your advice too. Yeah, yeah. Don't give up being good. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sweet, right? Like, like, like and be good. Yeah, Is that that one doesn't. No, work. just do describe. <laughs> like, let and him describe. throw it. Yeah, say like and describe. Plug like your plug describe. your podcast. Oh yeah, plug your like and subscribe. Uh, Brusco Talk Shop on Spotify and YouTube and all the places that podcasts are. Mitchie Brusco eighty four on Instagram and TikTok and Twitter and all that. Um, and uh, go watch Tony Hawk's Vert Alert. The finals just happened. It was a great event. Oh, yeah. We just reposted all of it. Yeah. Finals and best trick. It's really good. Cool. There you go. Cool. Check it out. See there you guys go. next week. Bye. Bye.